software developer at Artix. Um, and I'm working there since 2019 first as a working student, and now I'm a full-time developer there. And today I'm going to talk about Oracle ULN repositories um, and how you can create and sync them using Foreman and Catalo. I'm also going to give a brief demonstration about Debian repositories, uh, GUI, and uh, we have added some hints so that user has better experience when they are creating the Debian repositories. All right, so first question is, what is Oracle ULN repository? ULN stands for Unbreakable Linux Network Repository. Uh, these repositories provide the software packages which are distributed by Oracle. These uh, repositories offer software patches, updates, fixes, add-ons uh, for Oracle Linux distribution and their virtual machines. It also allows you to download useful packages that are not uh, included in the base distribution. For example, if you want some add-on packages, they offer you that as well. Now, to access the ULN repository, first you need to subscribe to their Oracle Unbreakable Linux support. And once you have that subscription, you are given a, valid, a unique customer support identifier. And then you have to register your uh, identifier, sorry, uh, your server, ULN server, so that you can access the ULN repositories. So now let's talk about what's different between uh, ULN repositories and YUM repositories. The first thing is um, for ULN repositories, you need subscription to Oracle Unbreakable Linux support. And YUM offers the software packages free uh, you, uh, via their YUM client. And another thing is uh, for ULN repositories, you need a customer support identifier to register your server. And then you are given all the support from Oracle. Whereas in YUM server, you are not given any kind of support. Other thing is YUM, uh, in YUM repositories, all the packages are open source. Whereas in ULN repositories, uh, they also offer non-open source packages as well, for example, the commercial packages. Now let's uh, talk about the content of the ULN repositories. ULN offers 100 or more than 100 unique channels, and each channel gives different kind of packages uh, with uh, support of different architectures like i386 or 64-bit ARM, etc. Uh, for example, along with the uh, base and base packages, it provides add-on uh, ULN packages or channels, and there you can have your add-ons. Uh, these add-ons are the packages which are not included in your base distributions. It also provides the application stream packages or uh, the latest version of the packages for the base distributions. It also provides case splice uh, packages, which are the uh, which updates the critical components of your Oracle distribution to uh, patch these uh, to have the security patches. And the good thing is you don't have to reboot your system uh, when you are installing these packages. And another uh, channel is Unbreakable Enterprise Kernel Release. Uh, as the name suggests, it provides packages for the kernel. Now let's go to the demonstration of the ULN re repository. So I'll be giving you two demonstrations. One is about the ULN repositories, how you can create your repositories and sync it on Foreman and Catello. And second is about the uh, GUI hints we have added in Debian repositories to make the user experience better. So um, to access the ULN repository, you need a subscription. Once you have a subscription, you need to sign in to the uh, uh, linux.oracle.com. And then once you are signed in, uh, there are channels, different channels, I will, as I was talking about, uh, to have the packages. 
and the label of the channels work as the URL of the repository. For example, um, in Foreman, when you go to the products, um, create a product and you want to add a new repository. For example, OVM ULN. And it's a type of Yum repository. Here you need an upstream URL. And for that, all you have to do is have a schema of ULN and then simply copy the label of the uh, package and this will create your upstream URL. Along with the URL, you need a username, password, uh, or the credentials of the ULN repository in order to sync your repositories. If you forget to uh, add the user and password, then it will give a nice error. Or if you already have some packages in your local uh, machine, then you should not provide the URL. Simply create an empty repository and then save it and upload it uh, once you are you have created the uh, repository. For example, um, if I simply save it, And here I have option to upload the repositories. Oh, sorry, packages. Yeah. And now let's go to the Debian repositories. So uh, in Debian repository, the uh, creation is similar to what we had before. But we have added small hints and some nice features so that a user is always warned if they are going wrong somewhere. So let's create a Debian repository, give it a name, and select the type. So in Debian repository, if you are adding a URL, it creates a remote for that uh, URL. And in Debian repositories, uh, to create a remote, you need a URL as well as distribution. So if you are adding a URL, then uh, the distribution field is required. Or if you want to upload your packages from your local machine, then you should not provide both the URL and the distributions. But let's say we provide the URL and the distributions. Now in Pulp 2, we had a distributions components and architecture list as a comma separated list. But in Pulp 3 onwards, we have white space separated list. And we have already mentioned it here. But sometimes this happens that a user is creating the Debian repository since always, and they are used to it. So they generally don't read the description here. But it's required that you have a white space uh, separated list. So if you add a distribution list and for, add the uh, comma by mistake, then it gives a nice warning as well that you, do you really want to add the comma? This is just a warning and not an error because sometimes it might happen that distribution component or architecture can have commas or special characters. So that's why we just have the warning and not the um, uh, error. Yeah. And for example, if you create the, uh, if, the if you create the uh, repository and forget the uh, adding the distribution, then it will also give you a nice error that you forgot your distributions. And if you simply want to create an empty repository as of now and want to save it, and later on you want to add your URL and release, um, in Catalo we have a feature as soon as you are creating, uh, adding a URL, it tries to create a test remote. And for that, you need a release or distribution. So if you simply add your uh, upstream URL, it will try to create a remote. And since you didn't pass the distribution, it will throw an error. So when you are editing, make sure that first you have added the release or distribution, and then only add the URL so that it can successfully create the test remote. And if you do it now, it should be able to uh, save the URL and create a test remote. 
that's that was it from the demo side and let's now move on to the future aspects of uln repositories so um as of now we don't have automatic tests for uln sync uh, sync in pulp so it's a word of caution if a user tries to create a repository and sync it and there might be a case that we won't be immediately get informed uh, that these repositories are broken if there is some new release uh, pulp rpm release which breaks the uln so we are trying to add the automatic test so that we are immediately informed that yeah these uh, repositories are broken and also um, we are also adding the http proxy support in uln as of now it's not possible but it will be uh, offered soon yeah, uh, that was it. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me on GitHub or email or on LinkedIn. Um, thank you so much. And I, uh, before you have any, the audience have any questions, I would like to ask one question to the audience. Um, So the question is, right now the ULN repositories are kind of inv invisible to the users because they are in the under the hood of YUM repositories. So if you have any suggestions, for example, we should add some documentation or give some GUI hint, or if you have any other idea, then feel free to uh, give us the feedback. Yeah, thank you. I suppose I have one. Why why are they hidden away like that? Do you understand how that came to be? Um, it's like uh, there is no specific uh, web link. For example, in Yum, we have the uh, web uh, URLs, specific URLs where you can go and see the distributions and packages. But in ULN, it only has channels, and that creates your URL. So as of now it's really hidden if someone doesn't have any subscription and they want to have subscription and use the uln repositories and they don't really know how to create the url so it's kind of hidden okay thank you any suggestions for that anyone I don't have a suggestion, but I have a question if I can. Um, I, as far as I remember, Oracle Linux actually doesn't doesn't provide subscription manager. Um, how do how does the registration then to the specific repositories work? Do is do you also package a subscription manager like we do for Debian, or how does that work? Um, I think you have to buy the subscription like normal Oracle products. Uh, so in Oracle, you have um, product subscriptions. So ULN is just like that. Yeah, what I, what I meant was the subscription manager, uh, the software that actually is used during the registration. Yeah, so um, I, I think you can just uh, build your subscription manager for yourself. Um, so the RPM um, package um, or spec file can be used to build your subscription manager pretty easy um, in um, oracle 7 it was a little bit complicated because say tried that it's really not possible to um, deploy a subscription manager so you need to um, do something more but with oracle 8 it's very very easy and you can just build your subscription manager um, RPM package, install it on your host, and then you can use it. Yep, thank you. So, Quirin, I believe you have a question. Have your hand up, at least. Uh, yeah, I just, um, what was I going to ask? 
Um, well, the one the one thing to say about the just the ULN channel name one more time, I guess it turned out invisible because well, the way it's implemented on the pub side is you just specify this channel name for the URL. So you just get the feature for free in Catello once it's in pub RPM, more or less. Um, but of course, then users just need to guess that they can post the channel name or ULM repo as their upstream URL to sync ULM. That's why it's invisible. And so my, my only thought is, well, one could write a blog or some documentation or something somewhere, but that's a bit of a cop out answer, I guess, because nobody reads documentation or like it's still, it doesn't really fundamentally solve the problem. It just kind of tries to mitigate. <laughs> um, I, I have another question. So um, regarding um, proxy support, do you actually know what needs to be done to uh, to support that actually the http proxy sh support should work but because uh on cartel side it's fine but we still have to debug there is something missing on pulp rpm side that it's not working but if you set a global proxy it no. should work no okay yeah. it's I could ask, like my current working theory is that this is something on the pulp RPM side. And like for us, they use a library for downloads. And for some reason, the library doesn't use the proxy settings, right? So it just ignores HTTP proxies right now and tries to download things without and then fails. And yeah, we've been having trouble trying to really narrow down that problem with the HTTP proxies or debug it. So Grant, you, you put up your hand before I got it. I was about to call on you, so please. I, uh, we can't hear you if you're speaking, Grant. Sorry about that. I had too many too many mutes turned on. Is this HTTP or HTTPS proxies that we're talking about? It's HTTPS. HTTPS doesn't work in Pulp three currently because it requires a patch from AIO HTTP because Pulp uses AIO HTTP to drive all of its connections, and we've been working closely with that team to get AIO HTTP to support of secure proxies they do not currently there's a patch in progress and as soon as it's released then pulp 3 will support that uh i don't have the issue the red mine issue open for that but there's been a lot of work done on that in the last month okay thanks a lot thank you grant um are there any other questions for manisha or manisha have you any other queries for the group no just one more, um, if you can share your screen one more time quickly. I don't know, you had the uh, test instance with the Debian interface or GUI changes. Maybe mm -hmm. you can show one more time the like mouse over hints that we also added. That's yeah, sorry about that. For example, uh, if I create a repository and select the Debian, so we are already giving some hint about the uh, how to add the URL, but we also give more information on how the standard Debian repository URL looks like. And same goes with the release or distributions. For example, in um, YUM repositories or other repositories, we generally use releases, but for uh, Debian in Perl, we generally use distribution. So, People don't get confused. That's why we have added the release as well as distribution and give uh, more information about that. And for component as well, we give more information what the component is and where you can find it. And same for the architecture. Nice. Thank you very much, Corinne, for the question. And Manisha, thank you very much. 
um, for this presentation. So just now, our next session is in 40 minutes with Ian Balu, who is going to talk to about uh, a deep, he's going to give a deep dive into Catello applicability, which I'm particularly looking forward to because we have quite a lot of requests in the community for that. But in the meantime, I would really like to invite you all to come over to a bit of a, a social gathering. I am going to drop the link in now and I hope to see you all over there. If you have any issues getting in, you, I'll stay, I'll mute myself here, but I'll stay logged in so you can come and talk to me or else ping me on IRC. But I hope to see you over there for a while and a bit of a chat or a bit of a game. So see you on the other side. Oh yeah, and I'll pause the recording, sorry. <laughs>